Hi, everybody. This is Tracy Malone, and I have a very special guest today. A friend of mine, Ariel Ford, is going to do two interviews with me today. And this first one that we're going to do is on her new book called The Love Thief. And it is a novel about a narcissist. And as I read the manuscript, I was like, this is like eat, love, pray. There's a lot of Indian healing and you know, just all this spiritual stuff, which is like my, my, my core. I love all that stuff. And uh, as she mixes it up with the narcissist, I'm like, it's like eat, love, pray meets dirty John. <laughs> I was like, this is great. Couldn't put it down. It was so powerful. Everything I was writing was I'm writing in the sidebar of the manuscript. Nailed it. Oh my God, my life. Oh my God, my client's life. So um, let's go meet with Ariel and talk about why she wrote a book about narcissists and a love story that actually has some pretty awesome karma. I wish we all had this kind of karma in the end. Uh, it wouldn't be fair to get her on the screen without talking about a little bit that she's pretty she's a pretty awesome lady. Um, she used to be an, a publicist and she is credited with making the careers of Deepak Chopra. Marianne Williamson, Don Louise, um, Miguel Louise, uh, Louise Hay, Dr. Wayne Dyer. So um, she's just got this cred and I want you guys to meet her. This book is something you will not be able to put down. But what's even more important is that people who don't have to pick up a narcissist book, well, the shelf, or they don't have to pick that up. They're going to read a novel and they're going to get educated. Our goal is to educate the world and not just the ones that are being image you know damaged and in the, the the fire pit of hell this is to let people know so that when they read it and their book clubs read it all of a sudden they're going to be like wait I, my sister-in-law and they start connecting pieces and that's what we need is awareness that breaks out of our bubble of recovery so let's go meet ariel and talk about this great book welcome ariel thank you so much for joining me Oh, thanks, Tracy. I'm super excited to talk to you. I'm so excited about the book. I can't wait. I want you to hold it up for the audience. But we are talking about your new book, The Love um, Thief. And every time I say it, I want I think of the Love Boat song, The Love Boat. <laughs> I don't know why it just comes to me. But um, I, I said in my introduction that I couldn't put this book down. And it was very much like Dirty John meets Eat, Love, Pray. It was spiritual. It was everything that I, I savor in my life. And I was just like, oh, this is it. But the notes in the sidebar were like, nailed it. Oh my God, that was my ex. Oh my God, I wished for karma. <laughs> it was awesome. So um, the tagline in your book is, is, is something like he broke her heart, crushed her dreams until karma intervened, right? So tell us about you know, this is every victim's like, this is exactly how they feel without the karma. They don't get that bonus till the end. Right. Um, but why did you write this book about a narcissist? Well, you know, I have written 11 nonfiction books. I never, ever in my entire life had the thought, oh, I should write a novel. That was not on my to-do list. But about five years ago, this story started to unfold in my head like a movie. And I kept pushing it away saying, no, 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 no. I don't write fiction. I don't want to write fiction. But the story just kept coming. And it started with the first line of the book. My mother was right. And as soon as I heard that line, I knew what the story was because it's a romantic spiritual thriller with a very juicy revenge subplot and a surprise happy ending. And, you know, over the years, not only have I dated a toxic narcissist, but three of my closest friends, all very beautiful, successful women, got taken in by mm -hmm. sociopaths. And not only did they get their hearts broken, they lost a lot of money, you mm -hmm. know? And I was the one on the other end of the phone listening to the roller coaster of emotions from the extreme rage and anger to the depths of sadness and depression to the shock and horror of being ripped off, to the shame of how did I miss those red flags? How could, I'm a smart woman. How did this happen to me? So when the story started coming through, uh, I knew where it was coming from, you know? I have a vivid imagination and I, you know, I was retaining a lot of that, but I didn't want to write the book. And, and in the movie in my head, I could see that it took place 
in Rishikesh, India, a place I've been to several times. Uh, and I also knew that if I were going to write the book, I'd actually have to go back to India to do some research. And I didn't want to do it. I was so resistant. And finally, one day I said to God, I said, okay, God, if I'm really supposed to write this book, then I need to manifest a business class ticket to India, which is about $7,000. And as soon as I like had this conversation with God, I was like, that is so never going to happen. 48 hours later, I had the ticket in my hand. Wow. It just happened. So just like that, I went to India and it, magic happened every day. Every step I took, every place I went, I began to trip over and see the scenes I had seen in my mind. Wow. You know, the, the spiritual bookstore, the man in the bookstore, you know, it, it was all like, like I had like some kind of ESP. I'd seen it in the future. So I, I came home and I started writing and uh, I knew that I didn't know how to write fiction, but what I didn't know was how completely different it is from nonfiction. I'm a very strong nonfiction writer and I just assumed I could make that leap, which is why it took me five years to do it because I had to do a lot of rewrites and I had a couple of book doctors and I have a lot of friends in the business and I had a ton of early readers, but ultimately... Um, I was able to, to call on my past experience of mine and my three girlfriends and not only be able to, to tell the story in such a way that it gave healing to those who have suffered, but I could also have revenge on the perpetrators. Yeah. And that was really fun because in most spiritual books, spiritual people don't talk about revenge. Right. But we need, it's not like we don't think about it. Right. So, I, it. <laughs> right. So that, you know, the revenge is a very uh, important part of the book. I mean, it's not a big, big part of it, but in the end, the monster gets his due. So, um, so it was a lot of fun to, to write. And, and the most fabulous part of it is now I'm getting calls from my early readers who said to me, they whisper to me, you know, you wrote this book for me. And it's like, no, I didn't actually know you ever had this experience. Oh no, you read this book for me. And then the craziest thing happened. So here's the cover of the book, right? You see this mm -hmm. woman on the cover? Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, I get an email from a woman who says to me, you and I have a mutual connection named Tatiana. I have no idea who Tatiana is. And she told me about your new book, sent me to your website. And I want you to know, that I'm your cover girl. I'm the girl on your cover. And she attached a black and white photo of herself who looks exactly like this. Wow. And she said, not only am I your cover girl, that picture was taken in Rishikesh, although I'm from Serbia. And your story is my story. I was in Rishikesh to heal from a toxic narcissist. So I'm like blown away. I send the email to my cover designer Mm -hmm. who I hired. She used to work at Random House. And I said to her, where did you get this image from? How did this come to be? And she writes me back and tells me that she had has all these photo agencies that she subscribes to, to license photos. She plugged in yoga and Rishikesh, found that picture, and then turned it into this, this illustration. So she didn't know. So suddenly this woman named Monia from Serbia has let me know that she's my cover girl. So this is the kind of crazy, insane magic that is behind this book. So, so I now believe that I was stalked. The universe stalked me and chose me to write this story. And I feel very honored and happy that it turned out the way that it turned out, even though in the process of it, it was torture. Oh, torture. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Well, because it was so hard, you yeah. know, I mean, it was just so not what I was used to. I was right, used to writing a nonfiction book in six months, writing 500 words a day. And I had a whole way of doing it. And I knew I was really good at it. And suddenly, you know, I'm getting feedback from my professional friends. Well, you've got a good story here and this needs work and that needs work. And you got to show, not tell. And 
I don't know how to show, not tell. I know how to tell. So, <laughs> so it was a steep learning curve. Um, and I'm, I'm glad now in retrospect that I had no idea what I didn't know that I didn't know. Because had I known, I would have never attempted it. Oh, wow. Well, we're really glad that you did because it captures, like what I loved about it was the subtlety of, it wasn't like, again, I read narcissist books every day. Um, and so it's not like, this is what happened, ABC, red flag. It, it just subtly, you were like, oh, that was a flag. Oh, oh. And then and then the the spiritual guy, he was just like, this is what happens. And, and it was like, yes, it was just so subtly put in there. And what I think is the most important part about this book is normally anyone who comes and reads one of the books from my shelf is a victim and they are looking for answers, right? But I think what this book is going to do, which is what we've needed, is to open up the awareness to the people who are just going to read a novel and a love story. And then yes, uh, yes, because I wanted it to first and foremost be highly entertaining. And my heroine, Holly, is a funny, snarky girl who never never heard the term love bombed until until her you know guide her mentor explained to her because she didn't know what love was like so many of us she believes that love is a feeling mm -hmm. and being a student of love for the last 15 years and a teacher of love i also believe that until i discovered that yes there are some good feelings to love but love is first and foremost a is a behavior and it's a choice and a decision and an action. And the state that we call being in love is just nature's greatest drug high. It is not love in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. You know, we're having this experience with a stranger with our brain on drugs like dopamine and, and oxytocin and adrenaline, and it feels so good, mm -hmm. but it's not love. And so when we get love bombed, you know, it's just like, oh, oh my God, I've been waiting for this all my life. And these guys, they're so charismatic and so smart and they know what to whisper in your ear. They know exactly what to say and they move things along at this in, insane pace and you literally get swept away and become an addict mm -hmm. until who they really are shows up and then you're a junkie. I need another fix. Mm -hmm. I know that guy is in there. I just spent three months with that guy. Where did he go? What, what you know, and you, you never heard the term being gaslit until mm -hmm. it's your regular experience. Mm -hmm. And so being able to create, create this scenario that was healing for me and healing for my friends is I feel so gifted that I got chosen to do this. Well, we are glad that you did get chosen and that you took up the, the, the call because, as you said, this is out of your box. I don't know how to write a novel. It would be very hard for anyone, again, even as an experienced writer for yourself to write something that I think this is going to be so big. It's going to it's going to change the world. And I'm so excited. One of the things that that like. I know how spiritual you are. How hard was it to write about the evil character? I mean, he was just a nasty, like that's completely the opposite of everything that you stand for in spirituality and, and wellness to like write about this evil dude. How right, but, but because A, they're all very much alike, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. they exist. And and I really felt compelled to be able to, to put on the page this blood sucking evil monster. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people wrote to me and said, I hated Barry from page one, you know, because these people exist. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I, you know, my sister, my late sister was named Debbie Ford. She wrote a very big best-selling book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. She was on Oprah many times. All her work was about the shadow. So I'm very comfortable with my light side and my dark side. And the truth is we both have, we all have both, right? Only this guy's dark side really leads. Um, so, so I'm comfortable with it. I believe that it's really part of my job. You know, if I want to consider myself a spiritual warrior, then I need to take down and take out the, the monsters out there and mm -hmm. reveal them for who they are as a form of, of protection for myself and others. So, um, 
I I don't have any problem at all. And I don't even know if you remember the chapter where I have this vision of him burning in a pot of oil. <laughs> all right. I literally had that dream over one of my friend's exes after what he'd done to her. I literally had a nightmare where I saw him, you know, dying in a pot of boiling oil on a beautiful beach. Nice. And it was cathartic. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it was. You know, you, you we're talking about Barry, the, the 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 narcissist in your story. But to me, what hit me, and I'm sure it's going to hit a million other people as well, was the evil mother of Barry. Like, yes. I had the evil mother-in-law who did everything. I mean, she, they were also wealthy like Barry's parents were. And and they did all of these nefarious, horrible things. And, and you know, they were out for blood. So I Yes, yes. and I was able to model her. I have a young friend who was forced into a marriage by her mother with this very attractive guy from another country who needed a green card. And I don't remember how he came into the circle, but the whole family loved him, rallied around him and said, oh no, he's your destiny. He's your soulmate. And she knew she didn't want to marry him, but the evil mother, you know, manipulated her. And of course it didn't last. And, you know, it was terrible. So, you know, I, I was always aware that evil mother-in-laws were a real possibility out there. Oh yeah. So 26 years ago, when I decided to manifest my soulmate, one of my must-haves on my list was to have the world's greatest mother-in-law. That was really important to me. And I did end up with a great mother-in-law. Wow, that's awesome. That's really important because I don't want an evil one again. So I'm going to add that to my soulmate list. Good. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that you want to tell people about the book? Um, yes. So at the website, which is thelovethief.com, there's an incredible bonus if you order the book from the site that is a series of eight free healing the heart videos. I went to eight of the world's top yoga instructors and I gave each of them a negative emotion and had them do a video on the yoga philosophy and yoga poses to heal that emotion. So it's heartbreak, guilt, betrayal, uh, uncertainty, uh, all of those kinds of things. Anger. Oh, that's the one I use the most, it, you know, how to overcome anger. So you can get it and download it for free today if you go to thelovethief.com. Nice. I will make sure that we put the URL down below so everybody knows how to get there. We'll put it anywhere else as well. Um, I'm so grateful. How do people find you besides thelovethief.com? Yeah, my basic website is soulmatesecret.com. And if you want, you can sign up for my newsletter. Every Tuesday, I send out a newsletter with tips on how to find love, keep love, and be love. So that's the easiest way to keep up with me, soulmatesecret.com. And then I'm also on Instagram at Ariel Ford 44 and Ariel is A-R-I-E-L-L-E, Ariel Ford 44 at Instagram. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, I hope that you found that Love Thief book interesting enough to maybe recommend it to someone. If you are someone who has been abused by a narcissist, maybe you're trying to explain it to your friends and they just don't understand. I think The Love Thief, and I don't have a copy yet because it hasn't been published, but it will be by the time this video comes out, um, to just go find The Love Thief and really see the not only the recovery and the revenge and the, the the twisted plot in it, but you'll see a lot of things that anyone who's not in the narc lingo world will start to learn the phrases, the words, so that maybe with luck, them seeing that this is what love bombing is, or this is what a narcissist does, they could look at their friends, they could advise them, they could guide them to the right information. So Share this book with people, go out and get it, and I'll put a link below for that as well. This is Tracy Malone. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you, Ariel, for being on our show today.